Please imagine that you are about to send a fragile piece of art, a porcelain figurine, or a painting worth millions of dollars. Would you just put it into a bubble envelope, hoping the delivery company will safely hand it over into the addressee? Probably not. You would take every possible precaution to make the package stronger and more resistant to damage. Can we, in a similar way, prepare ourselves and our fragile psyche to potential threats and misfortunes? Is there a way not only to become more resilient, but also anti-fragile, to grow stronger with every problem encountered? Let's find out! Today we will be talking about the habit of mental resilience. Hi, my name is Andrzej and welcome to the Helpful Habits. In this podcast we'll learn how to employ good habits that will do the hard work for us, how to change our lives for the better, not by taking massive leaps, but with the help of small, easy to implement steps. This podcast is brought to you by The Land of Habits, the educational board game with which you will develop new skills and habits. Check it out on landofhabits.com. Why it is so essential? We may hope for a world where each of our prayers is answered, every wish is granted, and everything goes according to the plan. But unless you are planning to live in a virtual reality, it is not going to happen. Setbacks, turmoils, all kinds of complications are unavoidable. The sooner we accept that, the better for us. But accepting the risks doesn't mean that we wait for the negative consequences passively with our eyes covered with our hands. There is a lot we can do to prepare or even prevent bad things from happening. Let's look more closely at six habits that can help us to become more mentally resilient or even anti-fragile. Turning off the valve. While interviewing Professor William Irwin, he shared an amazing metaphor with me. It illustrates brilliantly how we should think about obstacles and react to them. Please imagine that you want to make a tea in your apartment. You turn the tap on, but nothing is happening. No water is flowing and you are disappointed because you really wanted to drink this tea. You start to investigate, trying to find the cause of lack of water. You put your foot into the living room and hear a splashing sound. You discover with shock that your whole floor is covered with water. Now you understand what happened. The main pipe that delivers water to your flat must have broken. Now, not making a cup of coffee is the least of your problems. You run to save your smartphone that was charging on the floor. You pick up wet papers with important documents that fell from your desk. Finally, you realize that saving one thing at a time is not enough. You need to take care of the root of the problem. Turn off the valve. After that, no more water will flood your apartment. Similarly, when we experience a setback in our lives, we face two kinds of challenges at the same time. The first one is physical and the other is emotional. Solving the former is in many cases quite simple. You need to remove the broken pipe and put a new one. The emotional problem is much harder and can have very negative consequences. If you don't stop the flow of the water, it can seriously damage your valuable equipment and even hurt your neighbor that lives under you. In the same way, in the problematic situation, emotions are flooding our judgment. If we don't manage them properly, we can make a terrible decision that will hurt us or people we care about. We can yell, say harsh words, resign from doing a crucial task that will damage our reputation forever. This is why the first thing you should always do while experiencing trouble is turning off the valve. Instead of surrendering to emotions you feel, you need to take the lead. Like in a car, you can hold the wheel and direct the car to the proper destination, or you can sit in the passenger seat and give the control over the situation to something else, your emotions. After experiencing a setback, I'll immediately decide to take the driving seat and make a logical decision. I won't surrender myself to emotions that I feel. Thanks to that, I'll be glad that I prevented a potential disaster. Changing the perspective. 
When something bad is happening to us, it is natural that we react emotionally. At the same time, our feelings can cloud our judgment. To prevent it from happening, you should imagine that this situation has happened not to you, but your friend. What would you tell them? What kind of advice could you give them? This friend's perspective enables you to see things more clearly to judge the value of things more objectively and properly. For a teenager, if their first romantic partner broke with them, it seems like the end of the world. But for a parent or older sibling, it is obvious that this is just a temporary problem. The time will heal the broken heart and this teenager can be even happier with somebody else. After I experience an obstacle, I'll immediately imagine that it didn't happen to me, but to my friend. And then I'll ask myself, what can I recommend my friend to do in this situation? Thanks to that, I'll be more objective and effective. The view from above. When you look on Earth from outer space, even the most spectacular structures humankind ever created doesn't appear impressive. Contrary to common belief, the Great Wall of China is not visible at all from low Earth orbit without magnification. We can see big cities, dams and the Great Pyramids of Giza and Egypt, but they are only tiny objects in the vast universe. Zooming out is an excellent way to look at things from a distance, getting the proper perspective and don't overestimate the impact of current problems on our lives. When something bad is happening, we can distance ourselves from it by using a unique stoic technique. Donald Robertson, the author of many books on stoicism and philosophy, brilliantly described an exercise called the view from above. In this meditation, you imagine yourself sitting on a chair. Then your spirit leaves your body and you can see yourself from the point of view of the third person. Then you start to float gently higher and higher and see your house from above. Then your city, town, country, continent and the entire planet. You contemplate the beauty of nature, the lives of 7 billion human beings. From this perspective, your day-to-day -day problems seem trivial and insignificant. This way you can adapt a proper approach. Don't ignore the problems completely, but don't worry about them too much. After something upsets me, I'll immediately do the view from above exercise. Thanks to that, I'll see things more clearly without strong emotions attached to them. Time travel. Traveling through time is a classic sci-fi motif. It was a crucial element of Terminator movies nearly 40 years ago, as it is now when Avengers are fighting with the Mad Titan Thanos. But to travel in time, we don't need fancy equipment or technology from the future. All we need is our minds. And we do it constantly. Every time we remember something, we come back to the past. Every time we plan something, we go to the future. Whenever we think that the current problem is the end of the world, time travel can do wonders. Firstly, go to the past. How many times have you thought about a different crisis in your life in a similar way? How many times has your life ended? If you are still listening to this podcast, I bet none. Were the consequences as bad as you predicted? Or maybe you terribly overestimated them in the heat of the moment. Taking into account this and many other similar experiences, how likely it is that this time this problem will completely ruin you? Probably not as highly as you initially thought. Okay, now jump to the future. Two years has passed. What is the likelihood that this incident that upset you greatly is still affecting your life? Isn't it more likely that you already forgot about it? Because in the meantime, all other sorts of problems covered the old one. If so, what is the point of getting so emotional about it? You will feel more at ease with each question you answer. After I discover the worst catastrophe of my life, I'll immediately time travel to the past and then to the future and ask myself a few questions. Thanks to that, I'll feel calmer and better prepared to face a new challenge. Premeditatio malorum. 
The ancient Stoics gave us a great toolbox to face our problems. Some of them require sharpening after 2000 years of its creation, adjusting to the modern world. Others are ready to use as if they had just come out of the factory. My favorite Stoic exercise is Premeditatio Malorum, which means a premeditation of evils that might lie ahead. By evils, I don't mean a Hannibal Lecter or a Chucky doll, but all the problems and complications in your life. Thinking about them in advance can benefit you in a multiple ways. Firstly, you can prevent some setbacks from happening by taking special precautions, like buying insurance, unplugging the iron before you leave your house, or giving all the chips and sweets to someone else which remained after the last house party. Secondly, you can create plan B, C or D to prepare yourself for many possible futures, not only the best possible one. You can also do it when you are calm and think clearly, not in the state of distress that will make it much harder to make a reasonable decision. Let's explore an example of a car accident. Please imagine that you had a head-on car collision with another car. Your car is completely crushed, your body is shaking and you have no idea what to do next. In this state it is nearly impossible to come up with a reasonable plan. But in an aha moment you realize that you had created a checklist for exactly this situation. You open your glove compartment, take a piece of paper from it and just follow the steps you prepared in advance. You don't need to think, make decisions, just follow your own recommendations. How valuable will this checklist be in this situation? I believe it can save you a ton of nerves and creating it will take you only 5 minutes. Very good cost-benefit ratio. Thirdly, you get a mental readiness. Because you imagine this scenario already, you are not shocked by it. It is much easier for you to keep your emotions in check and implement the plan you prepared earlier or to create a new one here and now. After I plan my day or week, I'll immediately think about possible misfortunes and prepare mentally for them. Thanks to that, I'll feel safer and in control. Cognitive reframing. We may think that events in our lives are objectively good or bad, but as Epictetus stated more than 2000 years ago, it is not things that upset us, but our judgment about things. For the ancient Stoics, it was obvious that facts are always neutral. It is up to us how we will view them as something great or terrible. Let me tell you a story. A son of farmer found a wild horse on the prairies. All the neighbors agreed that he was very lucky, but the farmer himself wasn't sure about it. Time will tell, he said philosophically. A week later, a newly acquired Mustang ran away. What a terrible loss, the neighbors said. Time will tell. Another week later, wild horse came back to the farm, but this time with company two different horses. The fortune smiled at you, the neighbors said. Time will tell, as always replied the farmer. A month later, the farmer's son fell off his horse and broke his leg. What a tragedy, the neighbors said. Time will tell, answered the farmer. A month after that came the army and took all the young men in the village to military training. The farmer's son, due to his injury, was spared and stayed with his family. What a fortunate development, the neighbors said. Time will tell, concluded the farmer. It is in human nature to pass judgments quickly. If you fall from a horse and broke a leg, it has to be bad. If you fall in love, it has to be good. But you never know how the situation will develop. Maybe a broken leg will force you to change the way you work for the better. Instead of traveling for thousands of miles each month, you will do all the meetings online. Maybe a newly discovered love will leave you with a broken heart and empty bank account. In hindsight, you will be begging fate to allow you to go back in time and never meet this person. I hope these examples convinced you at least a little bit, that facts are indeed neutral and our emotional response is caused not by facts, but our judgment. When we face unexpected events, we can use cognitive reframing, choose to view them in a specific way. 
My favorite cognitive frames are 1. Blessing in disguise 2. Resourcefulness training 3. A turning point 4. A great story to tell Let me show you what I mean by each of them. Frame blessing in disguise encourages me to look for positives in a situation that at first glance looks dire. The pandemic is an excellent example. Due to COVID, I initially lost my source of income for nearly half a year. I could honestly say then that the pandemic was the worst thing that could happen to me professionally. So what was good about it? Because companies cancelled all trainings, my calendar became empty. I was given unprecedented amount of free time. I invested it to polish my English and learn the best tools for conducting online trainings. Thanks to that, I was able to get international clients, significantly limit travel, and days in which I don't see my wife and kids. In hindsight, I can equally honestly say that the pandemic was the best thing that could happen to me professionally. After undressing it from ugly disguise, it turned out to be a true and sexy blessing. When, despite my best efforts, I don't find anything good in a given situation, I use the second frame, resourcefulness training. Let me quote Epictetus one more time. Difficulties show a person's character. So when a challenge confronts you, remember that God is matching you with a younger sparring partner, as would a physical trainer. End of the quote. Even if sparring with a difficult opponent or situation is not pleasant, it can still be valuable. It can make you stronger, more resilient, or self-confident if you pass this test with flying colors. This mindset helps me to quickly change my response to a setback from oh my god, why this again, into challenge accepted. The third helpful frame is a turning point. When time and time again things don't go according to my plan, instead of questioning myself and my competences, I look more closely at the plan. Maybe it was unrealistic or the conditions have changed so much that the old plan does not fit the new reality. A dramatically poor result on your project, campaign or actions is, of course, painful, but at the same time it can be a wake-up call that you have needed for a long time. Without noticing the problem, it cannot be solved. Thank God you finally got the message and now you can do something about it. The last frame I use when all the others failed me is a great story to tell. In my journals I collect not only examples of my achievements, but also screw-ups. They are painful and often embarrassing at the moment, but later I can use them as real-life examples during my trainings. The participants of my workshop love hearing about my stupidity and hurtful consequences I needed to endure. That is why after facing turmoil, I tell myself, for the price of momentary discomfort, I am buying a story that I can use for many years to come. It is worth it. Now you know how powerful the cognitive reframing can be. Design a habit in your life that will change the way you react to difficulties. After the situation develops in an unexpected way, I'll immediately use one of four frames. Blessing in disguise, resourcefulness training, a turning point, a great story to tell. Thanks to that, I feel less stressed and more excited. Final words. Even though we have a limited control over what will happen in our lives, the way we react to it is entirely up to us. Things that look at first glance like the biggest strategy of your life can turn out to be an impulse to your biggest breakthrough. Seize the opportunity by changing your mindset with the help of habits become more mental resilient or even anti-fragile. May the power of good habits be with you and till next time.